Oh yeah, this is true. They don't know how she looks. But that's yeah, they don't know how. So I didn't understand this. I didn't see that stuff. I don't understand why they branch them. Shoot every. I don't. They don't spell that out in here. I tried when I see in the summer. And what are they saying over here? Well, here they're saying humans are the only one. But they're still getting a spread here for among these kind of eepy things, right? I, it's, it's, that's that's what's been bothering me when I came here. It's like. Why does it eat meat? Oh, uh, you gotta read the plaques. Because after Adam and Eve's fall, death came to be. There was no death before. You gotta read it. You gotta read the plaques. I tell you, read each plaque and photograph each plaque for the talk you're putting together. Egyptian cubit, the arc would be 517 feet. No, no, this one. Which one do you want? This one? Yeah, this is a good one. Dinosaurs are huge. How could they fit? dinner cooking. How did I fit the dinosaurs? <laughs> this arc is huge. Now, I know there are different kinds of dinosaurs with many varieties within each kind. But the Lord brought to me two of every kind of ladder. And there's only about 50 kinds of what you call dinosaurs. So I only needed around a hundred of them. <laughs> oh, I know what you're thinking. But dinosaurs are so huge. <laughs> Well, the average-sized dinosaur would only come up to about waist high, and some were as small as chickens. Besides, God didn't have to bring full-grown adults. Young dinosaurs are easier to handle, they eat less, and they live longer to reproduce after they flood. Very good question. Big information from big size and other characters. Additional new genetic information is required for molecules to man evolution. So what is this saying? Well, don't point it at me. It seems to be saying there's something damn close to evolution. So what's the difference between this and evolution? Uh, well, except that evolution believes there's probably only one or two sources for all life. This believes God created certain set ones, but after that they seem to be evol evolving, but they don't mean that. They mean that just in, their genetic diversity is being teased out, but they remain the same species. So all finches, I guess, are one species? I don't know. No, it does say speciesization. We'll read the top statement, though. I know, but they're not using it the same way. Look. Uh, where does it say that? Kind is like a kind of relation to common class. That le led the finch speciation, but never a finch evolving into another kind of organism. So it's only variation within sp in the finches. It's, it's microevolution. It's uh, you know molecular evolution. It's genetic stuff. But and I said to that guy, we met. I said, you know, 
the evolution say it's a very, as you said, it's a very tiny step from this speciation into ver various varieties for one to hop into a different species. And I said it's so close. Might as well so, so does this mean that the, yeah, that, that no, but is, is this was this display saying that evolution is happening just that there are independent basal forms more yes. than a single common ancestor? Yes. And here are the basal forms, and again, this reviews the, oh. the tree, so the evolutions have one form. They say they're basal, but the basal forms are turning into something. Now, they call that speciation, but they're not saying they're different species. What? This preserves the viability of a population by removing those members of severely harmful. That's true. For example, these is shown in blind mice. So naturally, like a result in the death of someone who exhibits care of God for its creation through a mechanism that preserves population organs in a sin cause. God creates a mechanism. I always be aware of mechanism because that means God created something that runs itself. Maybe it's evolution. Evolution, I guess, is changing, well, two things. Microevolution means change in gene frequency, which they accept. The, the macroevolution is change in species over time, some becoming other species. How can a species become another species? Increased genetic variation until there's no crossbreeding. After many generations, no crossbreeding. They can't crossbreed. Mutations in both are different and random, therefore, eventually, they diverge. Yeah, see, this is debatable. Evol natural selection can't create new information. It only sorts what's there, but mutation creates new information. Right, they're, here, they're separate, here, they're independent. Here they dismiss mutation as unimportant. That's the serious link problem. That's, a, that's where the big fight is here between this and the scientists. The species is as a man-made term. That's the scientist's term. They don't use it. So what they're saying is kind is a... But what are different finches then? I think they're trying to reconcile evolution with this. Especially when it's supposed to be cast. I don't know, maybe not. No, it might be. It's, it's a good cast. Do you think it's a real cast? Well, maybe does it say? It's a real cast. No, it's a fake cast. Of course it would be a real cast. But I want to oh, it says actual. Actual fossilized skull. Okay, Ebenezer. What, what's the archaeoquid? I don't know. But notice these are the descendants. So that looks like speciation to me, right? That looks like evolution. So there's a, a kind off the arc called an equid at a family level, according to them, and it becomes these different species of, or well, later, but they're all the kind, which means this should be able to mate with the arc equid. So you can't do it over time, but you should be able to mate a horse with a, with a, with a, a donkey? No? Or a zebra? No? Or those are different kind also. It's a vague definition. They're using a vague definition of kind. See, as North America cooled, look at this. As North America cooled and dried following the flood, larger species replaced more. This is what the evolutionists say. I mean, they're damn close. I don't believe so this. Can, oh, uh, can, you, can, people, can you explain the actual archaeoquid? These people do. Okay, can, 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 no, can you talk about the origins? The species of all these later No, can you explain the evolution of horses? Uh, what the, um, well, the evolution What the basal uh, form was? Well, the basal form would be. Aohippus or Hyperion, which is a four-toed horse, forest creature probably, and it, it's considered the earliest known horse, and it eventually evolves into different groups. Some have three toes, or four toes, some three toes, um, and later into one-toed horses, but they branch a lot. There's some different groups, and some are alive together, three-toed with two-toed and that other thing. And eventually there's this horse, but the, this animal, this uh, Hipparion, is also apparently ancestral to the donkey and zebra line. This doesn't say that. It says equid, but does that include donkeys and zebras? Uh, you know, mules, uh, uh, donkeys or burrows and zebras? I don't know. And notice these are fossil species. These are fossil groups here. Neohippus, Merichippus, Neohippus, there. That's a three toe. This is one toe, three toes. They don't show the toes though. Here's the three toe here. I don't know who this guy has. But they were really, they're fossils. Could we ever find a living dinosaur? Probably not. 
but many plants and animals that evolutionary scientists thought had become extinct millions of years ago have been found alive. So who knows? Maybe there is a dinosaur living in some remote part of the world. Yes, it's Kong's Island. I know. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and it's visiting the Creation Museum today. <laughs> Grand Zebras versus domestic horse, and donkey is Grand Zebras versus domestic donkey. So one is horse and a donkey, a zebra, and the other is a donkey and a zebra. 